Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. I am going to be doing another day in our everyday watercolor journal series. Um, we are going to be continuing with the flower theme today. I promise I won't do flowers forever. Um, but uh, the last video was some very simple flowers. These were some of the first things I learned how to paint when I started watercolor. And we're gonna continue on with a subject that um, perplexed me for a long time. And it took me a long time to kind of figure out how to paint these and how I wanted to paint them. So we are gonna continue with more flowers. We're gonna do a rose today. And not only are we gonna do a rose, but we're gonna do a white rose, which is like extra challenging. So I'll do a regular one and a white one um, and some greenery around it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, leave a comment. I love hearing your comments about things you'd like to see in the future. Um, and how your journey is going with your watercolor journal. All right, so roses. In our journal, we practice, we practice a lot. So you do not have to put a beautiful page of one single rose in here. We're gonna practice in different areas and cover this kind of whole page. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the basic shape. And there are lots of different ways to paint roses. These are not hyper-realistic, but they are a little expressionistic. Um, they're a little loose. And we're gonna start by building from the center out. Um, so I'm gonna take some quinacridone magenta. I'm using a size 10 velvet touch brush. I have my core paints, QOR by Golden. And you can find links to all of this in the description as well. So roses, let's do our first one here. You're gonna start in the center with two overlapping C shapes like this. And it doesn't always have to be two. Sometimes you can throw a third one in there like this. All right, once you have those, you wanna do it so that they are really juicy okay so these have quite a bit of paint and water in them already and it's not going to dry the minute i put it on the page okay you need it to be wet because i'm going to rinse off my brush and i'm going to take the edges of this and i'm just touching the edge with my brush i don't know if you see that there and i'm using water to create a gradient from the center out. And then I'm gonna pick up some more paint and I'm gonna overlap another petal, curved petal around that. That's just the edge of the petal. And then, and you see how I leave white space in between, I'm gonna take my water to the edge of that um, painted piece. I'm gonna pull out my petal. So this is the whole petal you can drop in more color right at the edge so it's darkest in one section and then fades out to the lighter area and we're going to keep building these petals around this flower shape okay the center being the most concentrated and then as we go out we'll get lighter and lighter so we want the center or the inside of our petals to be darkest and then gradually getting lighter as it goes outside, okay? And this is much, this is actually hard to do very slowly for me at this point. Um, you start to get intuitive with this and it's easier to kind of build a little bit more quickly. But at first you do have to start slow. And your goal is to get to a, a rounded shape or somewhat rounded, the, the edges should not be perfectly round. And I made that one really dark. I went right straight from the color in the palette outward. Whoops. It's all right, we'll make it work. I'm gonna add a lot of water to the edge of this because we are gonna go back in and darken some of the other areas. Do, do, do. All right, so let's do just one more kind of right here. And if you're working on 100% cotton paper and you're doing this with a good juicy bit of water and paint, um, things are gonna stay wet for a while. So even the center is still wet or damp. 
if you're working on cellulose paper or a much um, more uh, like entry level paper or journal, things might dry a little more quickly and you might have to go in and re-wet them. So you can see things are still wet and I'm dropping in darker color to the center. And ultimately I want two things. I want the whole center of the flower to be darkest and as it grows out, it'll be lighter towards the edges. And I want the um, inside area of my petals to be darker than the outside, if that makes sense. So just adding, and you can see, I'm just adding a little, a little zhuzh. You don't have to add it on every one. You can add it in a little bit darker or more thicker in some places because this is an organic flower. It's going to have areas of highlight and shadow that aren't all perfect. And now I'm just got a damp, clean brush. I'm just going and touching up some of these little edges. And I'm gonna go even darker in the center here. I'm gonna take some of my quadacridone with a little dioxazine purple and go even darker in the center. And you can see I'm messing up the center a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. Now we're going to let that dry. The center will dry lighter. It looks a little dramatic right now. And now we're going to try a white rose. Now a white rose, um, the white of the paper is your white. So really it's more like a gray rose, <clears throat> but leaving some areas completely white. I'm going to use Payne's gray very lightly. You can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can mix grays. You don't have to use Payne's gray. Payne's gray is a very cool gray. Um, you can mix your own grays and I got some spillage of my quadacridone over here and you can make them a warmer tone, like a more yellowish gray, or you can make them a more blue toned gray. So you can play with the color of the gray or the tone of it. All right, lots and lots of water. Same thing applies when painting this white rose. All right, I'm gonna make my interlocking C shapes, but we are not going to let them stay like that, okay? A lot of people get caught up, and I'll show you what not to do in a second. Um, same thing, I'm gonna take lots of water, and I want it to get to basically almost white, like you can't see where that edge of that petal ends, or just barely. And we're gonna leave lots of generous white space in this. And then as you get all the way out to the edge, I'm going to, it's really gonna be white, the white of the paper. Um, and then we're gonna put some greenery around it to define those edges so we can see where the actual white petal ends and it's really just the white of the paper. So this one's trickier, it's more subtle. You have to not overpaint it. Let's get this filled in. But the same thing is true. The areas that are darkest towards the base of each petal or towards the interior of the petal can be darker. They are going into the flower. They are darker in nature. They're in shadow. You can't see kind of where they end up. And again, remember things do always dry lighter than when you first put them on. And I'm gonna add just some extra dark color just in a few spots in here. And you can always go darker later. 
All right, so we're gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about what not to do, but what uh, a lot of people get caught in. Pull a little bit of this out right there. Okay, so when we start to do those C shapes, those interlocking C shapes, um, people get stuck in the C shape. They forget to make the petal itself. So they, and I'll draw on here for you, they start to make the shapes. Let me actually do this on a scrap piece of paper, not in the journal. It won't make a very pretty picture. Um, so what folks start to do is they make a C shape, make a C shape, make another one that's maybe a little thicker and another one and another one and they keep overlapping them but they forget the part where they need to actually gradient out the petal and then their flowers look like this our little spaghetti noodle flowers our macaroni flowers where we have all these little um, curved kind of macaroni shapes where sure that looks like a flower shape like an illustration of a flower but that's not what people are going for a lot of the time they want something more like this that looks a little more natural so with that being said remember when you make your your interlocking or your curved shapes that's just the base of the petal that's the the very edge of the petal and then you have to make the shape so this is really this whole wide area a petal as it folds around a flower is actually this much wider shape, but people get stuck with just making this part of the shape. This is where they put the color and then they move on, but you have to make the whole petal. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope it helps um, to get you out of the macaroni petals or the macaroni flowers versus kind of these bigger, wider, fluffier flowers. All right, so our pink one is pretty dry. Let's add some greenery around it. I'm just gonna take some sap green. And I'm gonna do big wide leaves. So I'm gonna go right to the kind of edge of the petals there. Now you can see a nice edge. And you can leave a little white space even. Um, and that white space will act as the edge of the petal, like it'll look like it's very light and bright out there. So rose uh, leaves are usually pretty big and wide and flat, but you can do any kind of leaves you want. I'll add a little detailing onto these in a minute. So you could add all kinds of greenery. You could do like just sprouts of, of leaves out the sides of these. You don't have to stick with what actually a leaf of a rose might be. You can make it up. If you prefer this look versus a larger kind of leaf close to this edge. All right, so with this sap green and these larger leaves, I'm gonna give them a little shading. So I made um, a cool green with sap green and a little phthalo blue. So this much darker color. So this is really warm. I'm going to put this towards the edge as a shadow. Give it a little ribbing line here, a little texture. go so there's some different types of leaves so with our white one here that is still pretty damp in the center I do want to add a little bit more gray in the center to emphasize some of these darker areas but it's still too wet we're gonna do the greenery around the outside because the outside is already pretty dry so I'm definitely gonna leave some white space between a little bit between my leaf and the edge of my petal. And now that becomes 
the actual edge of the petal. And part of the shape. Doo, doo, doo. I'll add another one over here, or maybe we'll do it over here. Again, continuing to leave that white space, but making sure your edge is not like a perfectly um, smooth rounded edge. Like you can see I have little bumps like the edge of a petal would be. And then you can even add some more. leaves like this. And add some more of that green blue color for shading. And you can do um, kind of greenery and leaves all around your flower. You don't just have to do two leaves every time. So we can add some more over here. Go right behind this other flower. And your greenery can just be a little like hazy and abstract and in the background. It doesn't even have to be a perfect leaf. You can just paint a background around your flower as well that is green. Or that is any color, honestly, that you want. You could throw in little wet on wet bobbles and dabs and go over it with another brush for texture. But you can see how that flower just emerged once you put um, some kind of background around it. It doesn't always have to be a really strong, vibrant green background like that. You could just do a subtle uh, gray background around it where you're just defining the edges and then doing a soft background that kind of flows out from the flower. So, but just remember like wherever your background starts, that's the edge of your flower. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind. So that's looking great. I'm just gonna go back in with a little more gray, a little more paints gray, and actually I'm gonna warm it up a little. I'm gonna pick up a little yellow. I feel like they're always a little yellow towards the center. And I'm just gonna put a few more touches. Oh, not green. Paints gray, a little yellow making this a nice warm gray. And again, that looks super dramatic. I'm gonna take my brush and try not to get my hand in all of the greenery. And I'm just using water to soften and pull out the edges. All right, so that creates a lot more depth in there. You're gonna let it dry completely. And if you wanna add any more, you can go ahead and add more. But that is how to do some roses, a pink rose, a white rose. Um, when painting your roses, remember you're always painting, especially with the white one, you're painting the shadows, um, but the darker color goes towards the inside of the whole flower. So the, the center layer should be the darkest. And then on each individual petal, the darkest part of the petal should be the edge closest to the inside. And then as it goes out, it gets lighter and lighter. So these, look great. I would leave them just the way they are. You can also play with a smaller brush, like I have a fine liner brush here. Get some juicy color. And I can add in some more texture 
more details. But just try not to get too outliney with anything. So I'm really adding just darker color kind of towards the very center in these concentrated little textured lines. And I do want to get right in here, super dark right towards the middle. Rinse off my brush, add a little water, soften them a little bit. You can see my center is super, super dark, but as it dries, it will soften, but then it gives it so much more kind of depth into the center of the flower. Contrast really can do wonderful things for your paintings. All right, we're gonna let that dry. Go ahead and check out the image because that will have the final, fi or the image of this video, like the thumbnail. That'll have a picture of the final, final painting. Um, after everything is completely dry and has settled, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment, check out the description of the video for links to supplies and materials, my studio crew classroom. Thank you so, so much to my um, super thanks supporters who uh, have done the super thanks um, button below the video and, and provided support. You are rock stars and amazing. And don't forget, what else should you not forget? Oh, you can find me on social media, um, on Instagram, Shana Searcy, and happy painting, y'all. Take care.